Victoriano Nero, Gaetano Benedetto, and a special intention. Glory to God in the highest. to the nations by the guidance of a star. Grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. We ask this for our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace, so the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the end of the earth. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to peoples in other generations, as it now has been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. 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 
sword and star at its rising, and it come to do him homage. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. Behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the image of the Magi in front of us, as St. Matthew the Apostle wrote in his Gospel, not all the picture is filled in. There are blanks. Some of the picture of the Magi is kind of like the back of children's coloring books. It's dots that have to be connected. And in our faith, and when we hear the Gospels and we think about them and we pray about them, in our minds, we connect dots sometimes. Gee, I wonder what this was about. Gee, I wonder what that meant. There were dots, blanks, in the Magi story that I like to connect in my head. But it is just my connection. Don't write the bishop and say, Father, to go and say. <laughs> I, I give you an advice, advisory before. It's my thinking about it. They brought gifts. Were they gifts? Like we know gifts. At Christmas, you buy something, you wrap it in paper, you put ribbon around it, you get one of those tags that says, to me, from me, with great love, is it that kind of gift that we're talking about? St. Matthew said, he uses an interesting phrase, they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Opened their treasures and then offered him what was in your treasury. That makes me think not packages wrapped and tied with ribbon. That makes me think something else. In the ancient world, they bothered. Uh, you weighed 
things. You went to the marketplace. You traded. You traded wheat for grapes. You traded apples for oranges. People traded. But if you were traveling, you had to carry a medium of exchange. Remember, no MasterCard, no Visa card, no PayPal. So you're traveling. You're going to be staying in hotels. You're going to be eating in restaurants. The Magi had to have with them a way of paying the hotel bill, a way of paying for food that they ate. What did they carry with them? They carried with them what in the ancient world was the prime source of value, depending on where they were from. For some, the prime source of value was gold. Maybe little gold nuggets, maybe coins, maybe bars, talents of gold. In other places in the Middle East, especially in Northeast Africa, Egypt, Ethiopia, the, the means of exchange was incense, a very precious commodity used on special occasions. In other places, a means of exchange was myrrh, a, a medicinal herb concoction that was used in many different ways as medicine. These three things were precious. Everyone knew about them. If you went to the market and you wanted to buy something, the merchant would have a scale and he would measure uh, the weight of your incense and tell you what he would give you for that weight of incense. I think to myself, they were carrying gold, frankincense, and myrrh, which really were Amex, Visa, and MasterCard of their day. They had this stuff with them. They followed a star, and figuring that a star is going to bring them to something big, something momentous, that even the heavens are echoing the event that this star is leading them to. They come and they find a stable, a leaky roof, no walls, straw, and a newborn baby, cold, it's winter, trying to keep him warm. And they did something that we do as gifts. They opened their treasury, they opened their wallets, and they took something out and they gave it to Joseph and said, the baby needs to be kept warm. The baby needs to be fed. The baby needs walls. The baby needs a good place to live. Here, take this. Take care of the child. They gave Joseph what we would do. You open your wallet, you pull out, you look and you see what's in there. And a lot of times, you take a bill, maybe you got a $50 bill and you hid it somewhere in the wallet. You take it out and you say, no, you, here, take care of the child. They gave gifts, yes. They, they definitely were gifts from their treasury, from their wallets. Why? Because now they saw that God had entered the world and in our world, God was in need of the shelter of our world. The first mass for Christmas, on Christmas, um, the, an, the, dawn, the anticipated mass, Christmas afternoon, the opening prayer says, you God exist outside of time, but now you've entered into the world and now you exist in our time. So now God is existing with the needs of our world. Seeing those needs, the Magi responded in a very good way. Here, take this for the child. And what did St. Joseph do with, the, with that money, with that precious gold and frankincense and myrrh? Well, they never went back to Nazareth at that point. 
Because the gospel tells us that a few days the angel warned Joseph, take the child and his mother and don't go back to Nazareth because whatever you have with you, flee to Egypt. Herod is looking to kill the child, protect the child, take him down to Egypt. So St. Joseph had no carpenter's tools. They just had the clothes on their back. He did what the angel told him, took the Blessed Mother, the Christ child, and they go down into Egypt. He had to find a place for them to live, better than a stable. He had to find tools so he could fly his carpenter trade. He had to rent a storefront where he could open up a little carpenter shop. All these things he had to do in Egypt. The Magi had given him money to take care of the Christ child. What did St. Joseph do? He spent it in Egypt. And if the Magi had not opened their treasuries and opened their hearts to the need, if they had not, I don't know what Joseph possibly would have done. It would have meant suffering and privation for the Blessed Mother and the Christ child. Which then makes me connect the Magi with what our faith teaches us. God comes to us now in our world. He has entered our existence. He comes to us in the sacraments. He comes to us in Holy Communion. He comes to us in baptism. He comes to us in marriage. He comes to dwell among us so that we don't have to travel far like the Magi did. They traveled thousands of miles, walking on camels, sleeping on the ground, eating stale tasting bad food. They traveled great inconvenience distance. We don't have to do that. We travel a very comfortable short distance from our front door in a car where even the seats are warm. We travel a short distance to find God here dwelling in our midst. This is the house of God. This is the shelter our parish provides for God where he dwells in the tabernacle, waiting for us and listening to our prayers all day long, where we come to receive him in Holy Communion, where our children are baptized and married, where our beloved dead are buried and sent home to God with prayers. This is God's dwelling place in our community. And just as you have homes that must be cared for, God's home must be cared for. God's home has heat and light and walls, and God's home needs to be supported as well. All of us have the opportunity to be made John to God, to recognize the need to support our parish, the need to share from our abundance with God just like the Magi did, to open our treasures and generously and lovingly give to support our parish. There's a reality, and you know uh, the agreement that I made with you many years ago, I would only talk about money once a year. Uh, you have to understand, and remind people, because there were people who loved to live the childhood myth. You know, a child has no understanding where money comes from. Nor does a kid want to understand where money comes from. You, Dad, you, Mom, you got money. Give me some. There's no understanding of the limitations on money. There are a lot of adults who, when it comes to the church, they want to ma maintain that myth because it's comfortable, it's easy, like a child. And the myth is, oh, 
church will always have money, the bishop sends money, the pope sends money. And that's true. Nothing trickles down to Sacred Heart Parish. Everything trickles up. Uh, we don't get money from the diocese. We send money to the diocese. We don't get money from Rome. We send money to Rome. It's all trickle up, no trickle down. And what is the source of that trickle up? You. The parish is supported by the good people who love their church, who understand and have an adult understanding of, I have to do this because this is my church. And I'm the only one who is going to support it. It doesn't appear. The, the bills aren't paid out of clear air. I have to provide the means for supporting my parish. I know that you do. I know that you care. I know that you're generous. That's why it's possible. I don't talk about money other than this one time a year. But once we got to be reminded, we're doing this like the Magi as our gift to God. Why do I choose now? Because we're beginning the annual ministries appeal, which is the way all the parishes in the diocese support the diocese. Catholic charities, the seminaries, the retirement homes, all the things that the diocese does are supported by the parish. The same way that National Grid and MIPA send us a bill, the diocese asks each year for support, Bill. <laughs> this year, our parish is assessed $34,100. When we need something fixed, we open the white elephant a few more days. We try our best to raise the monies that we need. This has to come from the parishioners. This becomes a sign of the love that the parishioners have for their parish, that the parishioners understand and want to show the diocese, yes, we're part of Sacred Heart, Yes, we're part of the Diocese of Rockwell Center, and we want to do our part. So I can't just write out a check, which I don't have, $34,000. <laughs> I can't just write and say, here, Diocese. No, it has to come from the parishioners as an act of faith, as an act of belief in the goodness of God and in returning what God has blessed us with. I do ask every family in the parish, please take a pledge card. Volunteers are in the back. If you've done this before, we have your 2021 cards ready. If you've never done it, we've got some lights. We want you to come on board. Why? I need to show the number of parishioners that really understand and are willing to support their parish in this special way that we have to do. Um, the pledge cards have different suggested pledges. If you can make one of those, fine. Make the pledge. Uh, if God has been good to you this year and you can do it, please do it. If it's been a rough year as it has for many people, Whatever you can give up is appreciated, but please give us something. Because whatever is in that envelope, the name and the fact, here's another parishioner that understands and supports the church. That becomes very important to us. Um, even sometimes I know young people say, oh, my parents will give. Mm, you got a job, you work, you make a few dollars. Even if you, if you gave $20, that's your gift, like the Magi. That's your gift to God. God, I know there's a need. I know that in order to exist in our, in our world, you need some of the things of our world. And I do believe in you, and I want to provide it. So please help us 
as parishioners in this way. I know you have in the past, I know you will this time as well. Let me just end by giving you another thought. How did we know about the Magi? It's in the Bible, Father, St. Matthew's Gospel. Yeah, but how did St. Matthew know? St. Matthew wasn't there. He was probably roughly the same age of our Lord, maybe, maybe a year older or younger, who knows? But he was contemporary of our Lord. He wasn't there. How did we know about this? Someone told St. Matthew. Who told St. Matthew about the Magi? Well, it had to be one of two people who were still alive in order to tell St. Matthew. It was either the Blessed Mother or it was Christ himself who told the Apostle St. Matthew. He remembered it and then wrote it down for us when he wrote his Gospel. Now we're connecting dots. So, if what the Magi gave, this gift to God, given in understanding and in charity, it was remembered by Christ. It was remembered by the Blessed Mother. And what St. Matthew wrote it, it's remembered in the church 2,000 years later and will never be forgotten. Because the things that are done for the love of God are forever. Therefore, I connect dots. Therefore, what I give to God is remembered by God. For how long? For 2,000 years? No, God, you can just remember it long enough so that when my soul stands before you in judgment, and you ask me what I did with all the goods, with all the blessings that you put in my hands, and God, when I stand before you a little ashamed of the money I wasted and the things I bought that I didn't need, God, but look, I did give to you. I did support your church. God, I did give for the charity of the poor. It wasn't all about me. I did give, God. I tried to give back. If he remembers it just that long, I'll be happy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, please stand for the creed. I believe in one God. Amen. Children to reverence and worship God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the protection of those who travel, for the sick, the suffering, for those in captivity, and for their salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the despondent, that they may experience the saving hand of God with deliverance from all troubles, misery, danger, and want, in even the most distressing of circumstances. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the sick of the parish, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For deceased family and friends, especially Nicholas de Galadaro and the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. O oh God, help, save, pity, protect us who call upon you in faith. For we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring St. Gennaro, all the saints. We commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives to Christ our God, to thee be glory, for ages unto endless ages. Amen. There are two announcements for today. This Friday, there will be no 8 a.m. Mass. The parish will celebrate in the evening the purgatorial Mass at 7 p.m. There will be no exposition. 2021 collection of books and calories are available to pick up during this week at the parish. <laughs>
like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Look, no. 
not on our worst sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
So if you could hang around for a few minutes, do appreciate the help. Also, as you leave Mass, in the back, we have our volunteers with the pledge cards. So please stop by, pick up your pledge card, and whatever donation you can make, return it in next week's collection, in the coming weeks, across the street. We have many months for this to continue, but it's always better to do things, get them done, and get them out of the way. What a wonderful sight it would be as I stand up here after Mass to see all of you attack the volunteers. <laughs> like, like feeding time in the shark tank, and looking for your pledge card. Please, every family, take a card home with you. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Amen. Amen.